In this podcast episode, you will learn how to embed the 3D video player ActiveX control into Microsoft PowerPoint and then create some custom buttons to control how you interact with the content. First, in PowerPoint 2007, you click on the Developer tab and then click on the option for more controls. If you have PowerPoint 2003, you can simply choose to insert object and then go ahead and select the 3D Via Player ActiveX control. Draw the window for where you would like to embed the actual content itself and then right click on the window and go into the properties option for the actual player control. Here you have options to determine if you want to do things like automatically play the content when the PowerPoint presentation is shown or if you want to control the rendering mode that, you, that is initially displayed uh, when the user runs the PowerPoint slide. You can also control what toolbars and panes are shown automatically uh, when the presentation is activated. So let's leave all these as a default. On the actual general tab is where you would tell the system what composer file you would like to actually link to. And if I click this button here, this tells me, uh, tells the system to embed the composer file directly inside the PowerPoint. So the PowerPoint file will become a container that will include the SMG file. If it is unchecked, then it will simply be a pointer to the file on disk. And then that way, as the SMG file changes, uh, the PowerPoint file will automatically reference that changed composer file. So if we run the slideshow, you will see the player will be turned on and the file will be loaded. And everything that was uh, enabled in those settings will be, will be there. So the ability to see the views pane and, and navigate to different views, the ability to play the timeline, or jump to particular markers on the timeline, such as a step three marker. And depending on what rights have been enabled with 3D via safe, you can have additional toolbars, such as the, the creating cutting planes, taking measurements, labels, and so on. Now let's say I want to turn off all of these and actually have a clean interface. So I've just turned off all the menus, but the problem now is without any buttons or toolbars, I can't really interact with this content. So how do we allow a user to have a simplified interface but have the controls that they want in order to interact with the content that's been created? This is where we can use buttons and macros to control the ActiveX content. So first, create a button and we can go in the properties of that button and let's call this button top view and if a user clicks on this button what we'd like to do is create a little macro to go to the top view now the name of the ActiveX file is ds 3 dvia player active x and then one because it's the first one that's been embedded when I hit the dot this will then give me all of the commands that are available in the API for the player. And what I would like to do is go to a specific configuration or a view and the view I'd like to go to is top. So if we play the presentation and allow the viewer to load, it's a little bit cut off here but you can see that if I click on top view button, it will navigate us to the view called top. Let's create another view. We'll just copy this button to link to another view. And the other view we can link to, we can call it markups. And we can actually copy the previous code and just change the name of the view. So that will link us to the markups view. Let's also create a button that jumps to a particular marker sequence. So we'll create a button, put it over here on the right, and we'll call this button step one. 
And if someone were to select on this button, what we will do is play marker sequence. Step one. And now let's create a couple more buttons off of this. So we'll have step two, step three, and step four. And we'll go and we'll change the names of each of one of these. So we'll call that one step two. This one we'll call step three. This one we'll call step four. And we'll simply go in and modify the code. So that one's step two. That one's step three. And that one will be step four. If we go ahead and actually start the player again with these extra buttons, we have our top view that we originally created. We have a markups view. And of course, I can click on step one and go ahead and run the view and run the uh, marker sequence or step two or step three and so on. What I don't have here is the ability to stop and start the animation. So let's go in and add a couple more controls. So let's create a button. We'll call this button stop. And we'll go in and make the command to be stop. And we'll, we'll copy that button. We'll call it play. And we'll do this one and say play. So that's good. Let's also put some buttons that will uh, turn on a toolbar. So let's create this little checkbox. And we'll call this checkbox properties. And we can actually change the name of the control itself. And I'll just call it properties. And if we go to the code for that, we can say if the properties control is has a check being true, meaning it's someone's pressed it and the check is now checked, then we would like to have the uh, properties bar turned on, true. Otherwise, we would like to have the property bar turned off. And one other thing I'd like to do is create another one of these buttons over here and I'm gonna call it camera. And what I want for that code is if camera is true meaning it's been turned on, then we would like the camera play mode to be true. Else, camera play mode is false. Now what does that mean? Let me show you. Let's also go ahead and change the size of this and go and put what we call a border mask around that. So let's look at the final result. So when the player starts up, you're going to first see that there's a nice border mask around it, which it's hard to tell here because we have uh, everything is white, but if I move this to the top, you see it kind of fades around the corners and the edges, giving us a little bit of a mask. We see here, I have my markups view and my top view. And if I go to step two, I can stop that. Now if I rotate this around with the camera view turned on, when I hit play, it's going to play but go back to the camera view that was made in, for the animation. But let's say I want the user to, to be able to maybe orient it differently and not play the camera that was recorded but turn that off. So now when I hit play, it's going to continue the animation based on the camera view that I have set up, not what the author has set up. Or maybe what I'd like to do is re-enable the camera so when I hit play, again I get the view that I was intended to be seen. 
Now what else I can do is I, I made that properties option. If I hit properties, we see the panel come up. So I can now do things like maybe change the color of this, make it uh, red, and then I can continue my animation and we'll see that it's red and turn off that properties bar. So this is how you can go in and build a set of customized controls for your player, whether it's embedded in Word, PowerPoint, Excel, or anything else that accept act, accepts an ActiveX control, including Internet Explorer. And this will give you access to many, many different types of API controls for the player. And if you take a look at the Composer help file and look underneath what's called the Advanced ActiveX, you see a description for all the things that you have access to for free using the 3D Via Player uh, API and create all of these custom interfaces and custom buttons to deliver the interactivity that you desire for your end user.